All right, welcome back to another video here upon the YouTube. Well, welcome to the fifth installment in the five favorite album series. And in today's video, we are going to be jumping up one year from the last installment, which was 1968, and be looking at the year 1969, which is my personal favorite year in music of the 1960s. So, without further ado, let's hop right on in. As always, these aren't in any particular order whatsoever besides um, alphabetical order of the album title. So kicking off at number one is Green River by Credence Clearwater Revival. Easily a top three album by them, in my opinion. They've always been one of my favorite classic rock bands and I've always dug this album quite a bit. You got tunes such as Lola, Bad Moon, Rising, and Commotion and Green River, which are some of my favorite tunes by CCR, which are big hits for the band which impresses me how many hits on each of their albums they had, which proves that their songwriting was well above everybody else's or almost everybody else's of that time period when it comes to rock music in general. Um, they have a lot of good performances on here, good deep tracks on here that aren't hits that are really enjoyable to listen to. Everything you want from a Credence Clearwater Revival album is on this record, so definitely an essential classic rock listen in my opinion. So, Green River by Credence Clearwater Revival number one, so let's get to my number two. So coming in at number two is going to be Led Zeppelin's self-titled debut album, Led Zeppelin. Easily a top two favorite Led Zeppelin record for me. It's this and their fourth one, Led Zeppelin 4, are my two favorite records by them. But of course, since it's 1969, we're going to be talking about the debut. A monstrous debut. One of the most important and impactful debut albums of all time, in my opinion. Definitely a top ten in general, if I would have to say. I'm easily one of my favorite records by them, like I just said, with songs like Communication Breakdown and Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, Days That Confused, and Good Times, Bad Times, and How Many More Times, and Your Time Is Gonna Come, You Shook Me. All the songs on here are really good, and some of my favorite Led Zeppelin tunes. I like it start to finish, and I think it's pretty um consistent throughout, in my opinion. And um, cool performances by the band members. Obviously, they would go on to have better sounding albums and better production values and better writing. But as a debut, it's a really, really strong debut in my opinion. So Led Zeppelin number one coming in at number two. Coming in at number three is another Led Zeppelin record, and that is Led Zeppelin 2, which was released just months after the debut album later in the year. And it impresses me how they were able to have two Awesome, awesome records come out in the same year. One in January, and this was like in October or November, something around there. Or later in the year, as opposed to the debut. But they had two killer, awesome albums to come out in the same year. Looking at the track listing, you got, um, debatably, even better songs. I enjoyed the songs off the debut more, but objectively... This is probably a better album with songs like Thank You and Whole Lot of Love, which is one of the band's biggest hits, and Ramble On and Livin' Lovin' Maid and Heartbreaker. So many good classic songs. What holds me back from the debut is there's two songs I'm not just a huge fan of, one of them being the extended drum solo Moby Dick. Not really a fan of that drum solo. If I want to hear some awesome John Bottom drum playing, I'm going to listen to a song like Achilles' Last Stand or something like that, or some other songs that I can't think of off the top of my head that I better drum parts, in my opinion, than Moby Dick, but it's an alright drum solo for what it is, but Led Zeppelin 2, still one of my favorite Led Zeppelin records, definitely um, in the upper half, if I was to do a ranking, so yeah, Led Zeppelin 2, coming in at number 3. Coming in at number 4 is another self-titled debut album, that is Santana's self-titled debut album. Easily my favorite record by them, and what a cool album cover with the line. Very simple with the line, but pretty awesome at the same time. A lot of these albums, especially the Led Zeppelin debut, have awesome album covers as what I find a lot of debuts, but that's another topic for another day. Um, you got songs like Soul Sacrifice, which is probably my favorite Santana song besides Black Magic Woman. Um, I'm not sure, but both have really cool guitar solos in them. And Evil Ways and Jingo would be my other two favorites. Some really good stuff right there. I discovered Santana after looking the lineup for Woodstock 69. Uh, and I had never listened to Santana. I threw this record on since it was their first album, and I was just blown away. I really got into Santana after that. So, Santana's San self-titled debut album is going to come in at number four. So, let's get to my number five. But before we get to my number five, I want to announce the Spotify playlist I made for this series. And um, what I do is I take my free favorite songs from each of the five albums I talk about 
in this series, and I put them in a playlist over on Spotify. So if you like all the bands and artists and albums I talk about in this series for uh, any video, and you got Spotify, it'll be linked down below if you wish to check it out. I would highly appreciate it if you do so. So with all that out of the way, let's officially get to my number five. Coming in at number five is another Creedence Clearwater Revival album, and that is Willie and the Poor Boys. This is uh, often debated as their best album, but I would say their next album from 1970, Cosmos Factory, is, but both are really good albums regardless. Um, This is definitely in the top two favorite Creedence Clearwater Revival album for me, although Green River and Willie and the Poor Boys do switch out, but both are such good records. I like almost on the same level, so it's kind of a tough choice. Um, Even more better songwriting than on the last one, in my opinion, objectively. Definitely bigger songs on here, like Fortune and Son and Down on the Corner. And then you have um, cool, lesser-known deep cuts like Cotton Fields, a cover that they did, which is one of my favorite Creedence Clearwater Revival songs. And Midnight Special will be my fourth one, I have to say. But the first three I mentioned would probably be my three favorites. If I have to say, but strong album start to finish, some really good stuff. Definitely another essential classic rock listen. As a matter of fact, all these albums are essential classic rock listens, in my opinion. So, Willie and the Poor Boys by Creedence Clearwater Revival is going to be my fifth and final album of my top five favorite albums of 1969. So those are my top five favorite albums from the year 1969. We had two Led Zeppelin records, two Creedence Clearwater Revival records, and one Santana record. All awesome records, in my opinion, and some of my favorite classic rock records. Y'all be sure to let me know down in the comments below your five favorite albums from 1969. This was a really cool year for music, and a bunch of albums I had to leave off that upset me, because there was a lot of good albums this year, so I'd be very interested to hear if you picked the ones that I did not mention in this video. So I do hope you all enjoyed this video here up on the YouTube, and if you did and some of my other videos, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. I've got a lot more planning coming up, and make sure to hit the little bell notification with Bob Ruffini so you get notified every time I put a video out. Um, you can follow me over on the Instagram and the Spotify. Both will be linked down below in the description of this video. I've got a lot going on both of the on both of there, and be sure to check out the playlist for this series, the five favorite albums playlist. Also linked down below will be the playlist for this series here up on the YouTube. So if you enjoyed this video and haven't seen the past installments in this series, 1965 up to 1968, that will be linked down below if you wish to go check this out. If you enjoyed this one, you'll highly enjoy those videos as well. So with all of that, with all of that out of the way, once you're done watching this video, blast your favorite band um, that released your favorite album from 1969. And once you're done with that, go out and kick some ass!